how old were you when you started writing? 26. So you didn't try to be a writer when you were a kid? I was confused, man. You what? I was come from Compton. I was confused. I didn't know what to do. I was out there real gullible. Really like kind of a follower, not much of a leader, not much backbone. You know, chicks were running over me like, you know, practically pimping my ass. <laughs> you, know, and, and, you know, like, and most music, most, most respectful musicians had a chick taken care of, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, what do you call a drummer breaks up with his yeah. girlfriend? Homeless. Homeless. <laughs> <laughs> but you started playing early, though, right? I started playing at 12. You know? How did you get to the blues place from, from Compton? What happened was I was literally ostracized from all the people that I know, because when I got the record deal, I was playing with all these people, and then I got these producers coming, oh, we can't use those guys on the record, we gotta use these. Right. Everybody was pissed at me, so then of course they stopped using, they don't call me for stuff. Right. So once my record flopped and everything, everybody was pretty much, I was just out there like this, so I had to get a job selling airline tickets. Uh, <laughs> wow. And then I got this gig, uh, and then Spencer Bean, my friend Spencer Bean, who was uh, playing the guitar with Gladys Knight, and he left town, he said, man, I'm gonna leave town for two weeks. I got this gig down at this club, Marla's Memory Lane. Could you go cover for me for two weeks? I'll be back in a couple of weeks. He went to Atlanta, never came back. So it became your gig? It became my gig, and it was a whodunit band. And the, the guitar player, the other guitar player was Charles Dennis, we call it Charlie Tuna, who is now B.B. King's guitar player. Wow. And that guy screwed me. He could play the guitar and just make, make women's panties just fall off. Wow. <laughs> I mean, every night, he, I mean, he just, it was like crazy. I'm like, how'd you do that, man? <laughs> I don't know. I just hit the note and he's, in, you know, he would go like, and, 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 and just the word, he's just, ah! I'm like, and I hit my little note, Dear! nothing. <laughs> Bunch of dudes back going, that wasn't shit. <laughs> <laughs> so one day I took a BB King record and I took the solo apart. And I sat down and I said, what the hell is he doing? Mm -hmm. And I took a couple of solos and I said, okay, and I threw a couple of weeks. And then, then in about three weeks I went and I started playing a solo. And Bobby McClure, this guy from St. Louis, who was a pretty badass blues guy, turned around and said, uh, and we're on to something. Oh, there. okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, panties off, panties off. <laughs> <laughs> Leave this on the bottom the, line. The, you know. the panty test. <laughs> but every opportunity that was available for me to be a success was afforded to me. I met everybody. I played on the right sessions. I had, done, I had, had every opportunity and it came out with nothing. So I had to go, okay. You can't scream, you know, if you never got an opportunity. Right. You get committed and you get in line. What's the most magical thing about being um, your own person or a musician yeah, you, or you artist? You invent yourself. Yeah. It's a spiritual journey you have to go on to, to figure out who you are. And panties on. Panties on. <laughs> we always come back to that. <laughs> <laughs>